and so they're slow to attack but they but they form these walls and preventions and stops to make sure that you know you're a piece of crap and you should have never been born and we're going to block you at every turn for no reason you could have the talent the skill to put your heart into it give us your best and we're going to make sure you don't advance that the incompetent one over here that's one of us who's dead and, and inconsequential they will advance you won't then the Lord delivers you out and says, who cares if you advance or not? It's, it's an irrelevant system to begin with. Ah, okay, okay. Therefore, I shouldn't care or worry about any of this stuff because it's just, you know, it's folly at best. Exactly, it's folly at best. You don't want to be exalted here on the earth. Thank you. I mean, if you do get exalted because of God's will, fine. You know what I mean? If you succeed in something. But I mean, basically, your goal is not to succeed here. Your goal is to weather the storm and to get from one side to the other with your faith intact, with your free will choice firmly uh, committed, you know, despite the rocks they throw at you as a result of who you are. They talk about equality. I just laugh my ass off. They talk about equality, at the, you know, well, with equal pay and equal rights. And it's like, when does that ever happen? I laugh my ass off at what idiots these are. It's just un- unbelievable. But nonetheless, we have this Trump problem. And, you know, I'm going to make you, you liberals out there, you're going you're gonna to vote for Trump in the end. You know why? I mean, unless you're just going to not vote and be cool and above it all. Uh, the reason you're going to vote for Trump is because the alternative is you will be dead. The alternative is your death via nuclear war or whatever weapon system, you know, for those who don't believe in nukes. The the alternative is global war that's coming. It may come before there's any implementation of any further election. They may just pull the the plug if they don't get their way. I I joked there would be nuclear World War III before they would allow, allow a Trump presidency. I hope you understand that. It would take a miracle for him to actually be there and actually assume the office because of how nasty these people are. You, you don't have any idea. I, I joked, I said, they're going to spend billions to stop him, unprecedented in, in all of human history, all the way back to the first man. Biblical proportions of money. Don't you find that to be an interesting story? Doug Schoen, uh, Fox News contributor, who's a liberal, who's, who's for Hillary Clinton and who's worked in the Bill Clinton campaign and so forth and so on. But he's a, a, a talking head there. He said, I couldn't believe he said this because it absolutely confirmed, you know, what I, I, I thought I was, you know, I didn't take myself seriously that I often do that. You know, there'll be a word, there'll be Rima, there'll be something, and I don't think it's any big deal, and you know, that it, that it happens, that, it, that it, it becomes something. But here's the thing. I said billions, and he said they're going to spend however many billions. He said, you know, a couple, right now it's two billion, and make it all about Trump. But Hillary Clinton, the Clinton campaign has this much money. They can spend unlimited billions Unlimited billions against one man, not even just as a campaign promotion, but against one man. Unlimited billions they're willing to spend. Right now, Doug Schoen confirmed what I said. He said $2 billion. I, I, I rechecked myself. I, said, I slapped myself in the face and said, he didn't just say that. I thought I was just hyper, hyper, uh, hyperbolic. But he did, he, he, he said it. He knows because he's a, uh, an insider. And he said, basically, she's got nothing to run on. So she's going to make it all about him. And the people behind her are willing to spend whatever it takes. I mean, in the past, campaigns would, would spend up to, you know, up to a billion, let's say for Obama and stuff. You know, but it used to be in the hundreds of millions. But it was never billions against the opponent. It was billions in promoting the candidate or a billion and some against the opponent, you know, kind of a 
a split between attack ads on the opponent and then promotion for the person. But since Hillary has no platform to run on and she's, um, you know, schizophrenic in all her policy, she wants to be all things to all people. She doesn't really have, you know, she wants to raise taxes. We know that she's, you know, but it's, um, oh, the taxes would be, you, you know, uh, something that's never been seen before in the history of everything. But uh, don't worry. I mean, it, it's a uh, Paul Craig Roberts said uh, before her first term is up, we will be vaporized. And I'm concurring with him. We will be dead anyway. So to me now, it's not really a vote for Trump versus Hillary versus Gary Johnson. It's really a vote if your vote counts, which probably it doesn't, but at least, you know, go through the, you know, pray about it, you know. If uh, if it goes the way of Hillary, you know, the best thing to do is square yourselves away, make sure you're where you need to be when you die, and make sure that you've squared it out with your children and with your parents and with your significant others and with your friends and any bad blood, you know, clear it away and, you know, just really hug each other, forgive each other, and get ready. Oh, no, 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 I'm not, no, it's not, prepping won't help you. <laughs> no, 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 no. This is for all the marbles. It's the, you know what it really comes down to? It's the dead, the dead versus the living. I mean, it's, 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 it's the whole ball of wax. It's, it's the, it's the actual survival of humanity. Now, whether God allows it or not, I mean, I look at the book of Revelation. I made a case. I did the math uh, early on, way back in 2002. I came up with like 91% of the population killed on the earth just doing the book of Revelation math. I mean, the way I did, I was doing a compounding death and adding it forward uh, as well for mathematics. It wasn't like a third here. For, it turned out to be cumulative. And it wound up that, that you know, there was 9% left. 9% left. And... uh I had a dream, you know, a vision dream, where when the nuke went off, I just stepped to the light and lived. You know, I just went with it. You know what I mean? I, I, don't, I don't, it was just like I saw the flash and then I went with it. I was definitely caught up in the air. <laughs> But I mean, you know, uh, yeah, forget about your credit cards, right? No, I can't be that irresponsible to tell you that. I mean, I'm just, that's what he said. And I, and I, you know, I get a hunch that, you know, he's right. I see what they're doing with Russia. And I say, I'm like, oh my God, they're willing to pull a, they're willing to pull a, a, a global, you know, conflagration. And if, and if Obama did that, he'd have the credit for the destruction of humanity. And he would be Satan, you know, right? I mean, you know, they blame it on Putin, but it's really Obama that's the beneficiary of the extinction of humanity. I mean, they can't fool me as to who they are. And Hillary is the, uh, you know, the, 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 the whore of Babylon, right? The queen of, she's also the queen of Babylon. Please go look at Fritz Lang's 1927 movie. I tell you what. I did a score at one point. You know, all the, the work I do seems to disappear from the net as well. I, I mean, I did a score for the Whore of Babylon dance that was in Fritz Lang's 1927 movie, and I, I didn't do the greatest job on it. I, I felt I could have done better, but I did release it on video at one point. I probably deleted it, you know, but uh, maybe it's me that's deleting everything. I don't know. You know, the devil has us doing things to destroy ourselves too. And... uh I'm going to try again, you know, I'm going to try again, but go look that up, uh, Fritz Lang's 1927 movie, Metropolis, it's the dance of the Whore of Babylon, and then go ahead and look at the comparison to Madonna doing her Whore of the Dance of Babylon, I mean, they're competing to be this, Hillary will be this, so if you have Obama at the UN, right, he's already lobbying that, so he's going to be the UN, 
You got Hillary at the United States. This is what they've been working for for hundreds and thousands of years, you realize. This is the pinnacle, the pinnacle of their, of their, of their path. This is the end of their path, too. There isn't anyone coming after these people. This is it. So, you know, look, it's not so bad to die, I guess. You know what I mean? And Paul Craig Roberts is pretty, he's very, you know, he, he believes in the Lord and everything, but he's pretty geopolitical. You know what I mean? His main bent is geopolitical. So he could be, you know, God may have other plans, you know, and, and I have to be open to that, to, to that being wrong. The other thing I want to say is, you know, as far as my experience that happened to me when I first got here in the pool and the Indians and all that, I don't advocate anyone to go seek after the dead or do anything like that or the occult or, or spiritual or any of it. It's just sometimes there's anomalous things that happen to us. And I think if I had, you know, done what the church told me to do and recanted or, or, so, or, or shaming pressure from bullies like Lisa Ruby and others, uh, you know, I would have lost my soul. That which makes me human. So I have to stick with the with the truth when it's there. But but no, I don't. You know, I don't have UFO experiences. I mean, with that one I had, and it led to this revelation. But if, you know, I don't have experiences like that. I, they have been defeated. You know, by me and the Lord. You know, defeated. They don't show up. Just like my friend says, he doesn't see orbs anymore. Of course. For me, the gang stalking has been somewhat diminished, mainly because I don't care. Mainly because I laugh in their face and then they get scared and frightened and they run away. At Walmart, they scatter from me like they know. You see, in the spirit, they know. I'm not taking any guff. I'm not taking it. I don't care what they do. I don't care what they say. I'm going to be in their face. I'm going to pray them all down when it starts. Walmart's notorious for gang stalking. I mean, we had it start with us when we were in, in Maui and I remember Angie was there <laughs> and, uh, and my daughter was there and Trish, we were there on, you know, on a, like a week vacation and, uh, staying in a house down there. So we had to go shop at the markets. We were in the Safeway there in Lahaina and we were staying down on the beach, you know, kind of down from Lahaina. And it was pretty nice. It was a beautiful lawn and it had a pool and had a kind of old, it was a, one of the artists that's famous. It was his house originally and it's kind of old and quaint and really cool. I kind of liked it, you know, but there we were and we were having a great time. But we had to go shopping at the Safeway because there's no house, no food in the house. So there we are at the Safeway and all of a sudden the cart that, that started, you know, the typical gang stalking experience started. Complete strangers. We've never been there before. <laughs> and, and, and Angie goes, do you see this? I go, yeah, it's, it's on. It's happening. <laughs> so we were like two witnesses that could witness to each other that, yes, indeed, it's going on. And they start putting their carts and blocking us from the aisle. You go, have to go somewhere. They'd be standing there. They wouldn't move. You know, just little things like that and started escalating into almost like I thought I, thought, I wouldn't be surprised if it went violent. You know, it, it was just to that level. And then it, you know, it, it, uh, and we kind of just weathered our way through it, ignored it, and you know, got through it. But I think she would recall that incident and um, remember uh, that it was like, yeah, this is it. It's spiritual warfare. It's they, they didn't plan it. No one planned. They just started in, you know. And um, we were we went from one end of it. To, we went right through it. And and again, it's just when you have really strong faith. You know, and and you have kind of a disdain and disgust for these people, which I do. You have to realize they're all under mind control. They, it's just like they're remote controlled, right? So whoever it could see the seed going on in there just says, "Okay, I'll push this button and this button and this button, and get them all, you know, get it all started, right?" And then then the zombies start in, <laughs> and uh, they probably wish they didn't because they were completely unsuccessful in their attempt, but I mean, she will recall that, and I recall we were both there together at the same time in the same place, and uh, it's interesting when there's two people together noticing the very same thing. It was like Trish and I have also noticed that very same thing, and Trish sails through it because, you know, they start in on her. I've seen them start in on her and saying, 
all these awful things to her and all this. And she just slides right through. She's always been able to do that. She's always been able to just, and I would marvel and say, how did you do that? You know, how did you get through that? How did, it doesn't matter to you. Not that there haven't been terrible, you know, attacks, but she just has a way of, you know, most, how do you do that, Trish? Tell me how you get through that stuff. I remember my aunt, and she's just started going up to you and insulting you right to your face. And it was, it was, it was the same thing because it, it, it was uncanny. It was, she was possessed. And she was attacking Trish right to her face. And Trish just slid right through her hostility because we also had to sit down and have like a Thanksgiving dinner or whatever, which was like the last Thanksgiving dinner we ever had. <laughs> because you just sailed through. How do you do it? How do you walk through all that opposition? I think I feel sorry for them. Is that it? Yeah, I, I don't know. You feel sorry for Trish will be here tomorrow. We'll have Frankie on. Uh, he wants to talk about, he's building a, a desktop computer, and I think he's, he wants to talk about whammies and how we're surviving whammies. I'm like, well, there's like a thousand whammies an hour. I mean, there's whammies all day, every day, you know? And sometimes it kind of gets you down. You just got to, you know, I guess the way to get through this life is number one, realize you are not alone. Numero uno, you're not alone. Look at all of us together. We're all having the same experiences. You're not wrong. You're not to be shamed, all right? Don't do what I've done, you know, daughter, son, whatever. Don't do what I've done. Beat myself up my whole life. Please don't do that. That's just, my daughter's, I've, I've driven her nuts with that. It's conditioning, you know. It's, it's just, it's, it's wrong. It's hurt me. I've been self-destructive because of it. You know what I mean? Like, they punish me and then I go take it out of myself. They attack me, I go take it out of myself. They say something untoward to me, I go take it out of myself. Please don't do that. You know, like I displease them, so I'm going to punish myself. I've, oh, I didn't live up to someone's expectations. I think I'll punish myself. This is all part of their, this is what they're trying. This is how they feed off me by getting me to punish myself. Then they feed. It's even better when I go to them for advice as I'm punishing myself that they are causing and then go to them to ask what, if they have any advice for me. And usually they say, yes, you know, they, they, they say things that will lead you more and more into, into sin, into, um, degradation into you know into the clutches of what they want to do with you which is basically degrade you and destroy you take an inventory of your friends you'll find that half of them that's what they're up to <laughs> they're not really your friends <laughs> i've said a lot today i better you know get out